a former SEAL was asked, who makes it through the, the selection process to become a Navy SEAL? And he replied, I can't tell you who gets through. Uh, who makes it? I'm done with that microphone. He said, but I can tell you, who doesn't make it? <clears throat> it's like, I can tell you what kind of people don't make it. The star college athlete that's never been tested to the core of their being, none of them make it through. He said the, the preening leaders who like to delegate everything away, none of them make it through. He said the big tough guys with the huge muscles, covered in tattoos, that want to prove to everyone how tough they are, none of them make it through. He said some, some of the guys that make it through, though, are skinny and scrawny. Some of them, uh, you'll see them shivering out of fear. He said, but every single one of them that make it through, when they are emotionally exhausted, when they are physically exhausted, some way, somehow, they're able to dig down deep inside to find the energy to help the person next to them. Service. Giving to another. Having their back is what makes the highest performing teams in the world every time. Not their strength, not their intelligence. It's their willingness to be there for each other. And whether they know it or not, this ability, this intelligence, this power, it doesn't, it, it doesn't come from them. And it, it comes from an external source. And it's interesting that it only comes when you're at your end. When you're at your end. When they or you are emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted, only then will you seek the power, the intelligence needed to succeed that is not from you. And that's exactly where Paul finds himself as he's writing the, this, this letter to the, the church in Corinth. And as we start chapter 2, we can almost see his mindset in his, and that mindset in his words. Let's pray. Father God, uh, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word, and I thank you, Father God, that uh, we have the opportunity to read it, to have it, to study it. Father, I know that I am not the only one standing in this, in this room or sitting in this room that has multiple copies of the word of God. I unashamedly have 30 different Bibles. And Father, I don't always treasure that because I've always had that in my life. But, but Father, we should treasure having your word. We pray, Father, that it would come and do what only it can do. Lead us, guide us, direct us, correct us, and encourage us in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, 1 through 5, we're going to start out with, and this is in the MEV if you uh, have that version or if you have a phone that has that version. Um, Brothers, when I came to you, I did not come with superiority of speech or wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God, for I, de for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the power and of the spirit and of the power, so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, I love that. Paul points out so many things in those first five verses that <clears throat> we can see that uh, the fads and fashions of today, and I'm sure they had fads and fashions of that day, that's not 
that's not really going to get people there where they need to be. The word of God and, and the wisdom that God put in his word is what we need because man's wisdom is limited. It's very superficial. And verse 2, Paul backs that up with, uh, I guess, as the, the infamous uh, Corporal Schultz would have said, I know nothing. I know nothing but what God has given me. And I'm going to use his words to declare to you. And, and he did an awesome job of that. And this was the, the, the version of preaching that Paul was using. I know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. I can only tell you what's actually happened. So it doesn't matter uh, any extra stories or any of that. And in verse 3, again, not using my wisdom, but the effectiveness is demonstrated in the power and spirit of God. In verse 5, Paul explains that your faith should not stand or be based on or be discerned by the words of men, but in the power of God. The, the message version, this one really hit me, of that verse. God's spirit and God's power did it, which made it clear that your life of faith is a response to God's power, not to some fancy mental or emotional footwork by me or anyone else. It's by the power of his word. That's what changes us. And scholars dispute, I, I read quite a few of them this week, but there's, there's no uh, consensus um, as to whether or not Paul was thinking of what happened to him in, in Athens, uh, which is recorded in Acts 17 and 18. Athens was the only large city in the Greco-Roman world that the apostle was unable to establish a group of believers or a church. It would make sense that this real-world personal experience would have a huge motivation to not try that again, um, to, to not try the culture or the times, but to just preach the word of God, to just share the truth. Um, and if, uh, you're un if you aren't familiar, he, Paul actually uses a sermon, um, I suppose, known as the unknown God. And that's in uh, Acts 17, 23 through 34. And it seems to be that might have been his motivation of, this is not, not today's wisdom, not man's wisdom, but God's wisdom is all I'm going to rest on. So picking back up in verse 6. Yet we speak wisdom among those who are mature, although not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age knew it. For they, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor has it entered into the hearts, heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who, who love him. And I struggled with that so much how they reworded um, that reference back to Isaiah. I thought it was for no eye has seen, but uh, different, different version. So it could, this could actually be written today about the rulers and influencers that we have today because they're always trying to come up with something new and it always falls short. I think Paul wouldn't mind some references to uh, some of the revealed foolishness of man's wisdom of the age and uh, ones that point to the wisdom of God because we kind of were discussing a little bit of that in Bible, uh, the, the Bible study this morning that... Um, that there are people that come and, and I think 
I think they love the reaction of believers that have to pause and say, wow, I've never heard it put that way. Doesn't mean it's true. But I think that I think that they love to, to say re, re word things um, with man's wisdom and often without the Holy Spirit leading it falls short. And Paul in verse nine is, is referencing Isaiah 64 four. And Paul continues with connecting what man has in his heart with the wisdom that is available to him. So picking up in verse 10. But God has revealed to us, is revealed to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows, the things of a man, except the spirit of a man which is in him. Likewise, no, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. But we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is is of God, so that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. These things also uh, we proclaim, not in the in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, preparing spiritual things with spiritual. But then the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is not judged by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Man knows the things of this world, physical things, worldly things. But when man has the Holy Spirit in him by being born again, godly things can be known. Verse 12, uh, he shares that um, God desires to show us, and he's given us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as a counselor and revealer. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to him except through the Son, John 14, 6. The Holy Spirit is a gift. It's our gift to understand. It's our gift to stand strong. It's our gift to be bold. It is a gift to, and when we receive it and maintain that relationship and develop it, it will actually give us the ability to live out the gift of salvation here as the, sanct the, the sanctification process continues. Because once we, once we have made that decision to follow Christ and to allow him into our lives, we're instantly sanctified. But then there's a process because you still have your natural instincts the old man, if you will. And how many of us know that the old man comes out? Stop lights, stop signs. Lots of times in the car. Lots of times in the car. Uh, and we have, to, we have to grow through that, and that's part of that sanctification. That's the cleaning up of the language, the cleaning up of the, the thought process. We need... We need to be reminded that that we have that gift we don't have to we don't have to struggle as we did but let me remind you or or inform you as the case may be what life would be like without the holy spirit as if it didn't exist what would that be like without that well genesis 1 1 and 2 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the earth was formless and void Darkness uh, was over the surface of the depth, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. So we, had, we would have no creation, no earth, no universe. Job, Job 33, 4, the Spirit of God has made me, 
and the breath of the Almighty has, has given me life. So we would have no human race. Second Peter 121, for no prophecy at any time was produced by the will of man, but holy men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. John 14, 26, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the New Testament. We wouldn't have the Bible at all without the Holy Spirit giving that to man and allowing him to write that down. And lastly, as Assemblies of God, holy rollers, evangelicals, those that, that, that live in the Holy Spirit, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't with power witness we can't with power share our testimony and you know what i hear all the time i i i'm not a good speaker i i i don't know how i don't i don't have a lot of scripture memorized <laughs> join my club i don't have a lot of scripture memorized either i can remember jokes maybe i should put them in a joke form just just kidding but it's it's a thought but but the story that you do know the story that you know best is how Jesus got a hold of you. Share that. Share that by the, the power of the blood and the word of the testimony. We shall overcome. Amen? God, as the Holy Spirit draws us near to offer us a personal relationship with him, but we must have the mind of Christ in order to effectively live for him. What does that mean? Having the mind of Christ. It means that we must know him. We must know who he is. We must know how he would react. We must know what advice he would give. We must know what, what would be his thoughts on situations that we run into in life. We should know him. I was thinking of a conversation that we had had, uh, I think it was last week, in the uh, fellowship hall area. And uh, I wanted to share this with you because I think this really, for me, anyway, this really gives me a great example of what it means to have the mind of Christ. As a supervisor... You must learn your employees. Not everyone is motivated by the same things. Some guys are motivated by more money. Some guys are motivated by more time off. Some guys are motivated by food. Doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> it's, if, you, if you feed them, they will work for you. They will, they will strive for it, whatever you're trying to achieve even if that's to do things with excellence. When you find what they value as important, what they value as uh, something that they desire, when you find that, you will know their minds. You will know how they would react. You would know how to speak right to them. In other words, we must know their minds to be a motivating supervisor. In the very similar way, we must know his mind. There's only one way that we can do that. Spend time with him. Spend time with him in prayer. Spend time with him in his word. Spend time with your God. And you will receive that. You'll learn, even if 
<clears throat> hopefully your mind will be more like his after you've done that. But even in those areas where you're not quite there, you'll know. Well, this is what I would do, and that's what God would do. Well, God's not going to move to your side. So there's only one way for you two to become into a, an alignment, and that's for you to uncomfortably at times move into obedience and to take the mind of Christ. And when we have that, when we have that, we can be a good witness. We can be a powerful witness, and we can speak over those things that we need to speak over. We must have the mind of Christ, and we can't help but know what man is doing because we're, that's where we live. We hear it. We see it. It's written all over the place. But I challenge you to look for the flip side of that. One of my favorite hobbies <coughs> is listening to 80s music, um, pop music, stuff that you would have heard on the radio when when you were in high school like I was in the 80s. Um, but I love listening because most of them are ballads, lots of ballads in the 80s. And I love listening to them and listening to the lyrics and wondering if you can flip it and sing that to God. Because many of them you can. Many of them you might have to leave out a little bit, reword it. Um, God doesn't want you calling him baby. But, but that love, that love affair that's in the heart, that's what he desires. So I love to listen to those um, and, and try to flip the script, if you will, and, and change who it's for not for a girl, not for my wife, but for Christ. Because that's the love that I want in my heart. And when you, when you get in the heart, the mind will follow. Amen? Amen. We can have the mind of Christ when we align with him and stop trying to get him to align with us. The, the, the old bumper sticker that I'm sure you guys have seen, I think it was in the 90s that these came out, the, the uh, Jesus is my co-pilot. Yep. And you're still going to crash. Because he's, <laughs> he, Jesus never said, hey, I would go with you everywhere you go. That was never a promise. But he did promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's inviting us to join him not for him to join us. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this word. I pray, Father God, that you would help each and every one of us to remember the gift that you've given us. We sing about the ultimate gift that you've given us in Jesus. And then when we believe in him, that we will have eternal life. And Father, that is an awesome gift, and it is so hard sometimes to live that out. But Father, we don't have to do it alone. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit to, to come into our lives, to lead, guide, direct, and to help us understand and have the mind of Christ. Father, we want to be the witness that you have made us to be. We want to be the, the men and women of God that you have made us to be. We cannot do that on our own strength. And I thank you that we don't have to. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, for each and every one that is here, that you would help us all allow that Spirit of God into all the rooms of our house not just the, the little part at, at the center, our heart, but, Father God, into our minds, into our mouths, into our relationships. Father, I pray that you 
would change us in a mighty, mighty way. And that heaven would be poured out on this place, on this town, and that people would see, feel, and hear the word of God being shared, being shared in our stories and our testimonies, being shared at the events that we do from this little place. But Father God, let not any of us be the forefront. Let us all shine all of that back to you. We thank you, we love you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. And have the mind of Christ.